All right. Um, so I guess I'll just start with a question that everyone gets asked all the time in the arts. Uh, when did you decide you wanted to be an artist and how did you begin? Um, I don't know if I really ever decided that I wanted to be an artist. Like, I think it kind of just, um, like organically grew, I don't know, into a life decision. Maybe I, I didn't really, I didn't really participate in the arts when I was a kid or, um, in junior high or in high school or anything like that. It wasn't until I was like at junior college that I decided to start taking some drawing classes. And then um, I needed to transfer over to KU and was trying to make up my mind as far as what to major in. And art was the thing that just spoke to me the loudest out of the things that the other options that I was considering. Um, so I didn't, you know, really ever make a, like a real choice about it. Like, yeah, I'm going to be an artist. Um, up until maybe, maybe up until recently, actually, I think if I've like, I've, I've kind of come to realize that you, maybe you make that decision every day that you get up and you just keep doing it, I think. Okay. Um. So what is attractive about it to you then? A couple of things. Um, when I initially started, uh, when I was younger, it was a, like an outlet, like an emotional outlet, I think, uh, an expressive outlet. And for, you know, a lot of angst and I had a lot of anxiety. So it was an, an, a lot, an outlet to get that stuff out. Um, and now it is maybe less, less that, well, maybe not. That's still a pretty big part of it. I find that it's um, a meditative thing for me now. I notice that if I don't do it for a while, I start to get a little kooky. I need, I need some kind of an outlet. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, when you need to use art as an outlet, um, is it that urge in itself that gives you the inspiration to work? When you don't have a concept in mind, um, how do you find that inspiration? Um, well, I've been pretty lucky lately when I feel like I've had a concept there to help me for the last two years, probably. But prior to that, the media itself is something that I let guide me. So if I don't have a concept, um, I still try and paint. I still try and come in and work. Uh, I may not know why or what I'm trying to form, but um, the me my attraction to the medium itself is something that, that keeps me coming back. And then I, f I feel like over a period of time, you start to become aware of what the con you you know you what your concepts are what you're interested in like a personal motif yeah um, so does that answer that question yeah a little bit yeah okay um, so what do you find the most important part of creating art or at least what do you think makes art the most successful um, as in regards to the materials and the process and the concept and the aesthetic? Which do you think is the most important part of creating art? Concept, aesthetic, or um, medium? Materials. Materials? Process, yeah. Ooh. Man, that's tough. 
Um, they're all so important for different reasons for to everybody. Um, for me, I think that it's a toss up between maybe material and concept. Uh, God, it might be a toss up between all three. Yeah. You know, it's so hard. And, and at other times it just, it depends where you are, like in a, in that stage of like developing a body of work. I think because it seems like at the beginning you're everything's very nebulous and you don't know what's happening so the material is the most important thing and working with it and then as you start to develop the concept maybe out of that then then the aesthetic starts to become more visible I think and so it's you know they're each very important at certain stages I think and then they're all very important at the same time. Um, I don't know if I could pick one. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. That yeah. uh, each of them are more relevant and important at different stages of the creation of the artwork. Yeah. Um, so, why painting? Um, I think... Well, I know why. Because, you know, when I was younger, um, I was attracted to writing more than anything. And the, or also like filmmaking, movies and stuff. Um, but the, when I found painting, I think the thing that I was the most attracted to about it was the physicality of it especially oil paint and I'm somebody that I I like physical labor and I like getting dirty like I get a lot of gratification at like a dog just digging a hole for no reason sometimes um, just the fact that you know that work was done I, I can get like a lot of gratification out of it. Just the, it's just you know physical. I think it, some of that goes back to like burning off like some kind of anxiety or like you know um, like as an outlet to like burn that energy off. Uh, and painting is you know for me oil painting requires that physical gesture. It requires a lot of labor. And um, so I think that's probably why painting attracted me so much. And it also, this is like a cop-out answer, but it just feels really natural. It feels like the most natural thing that I've ever done in my life. So. No, I wouldn't say that's a cop-out. I think there's something, I think there's a, there's importance to that, to that primal feeling. Yeah. yeah. Something that you can't describe. No, it's just there. It just feels... You know, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. There are clearly people in the world that are better at some things than other things. Which I'm, I'm learning this now because I've been doing a lot of work over at my, my dad's house. A lot of, like, updates and renovations. That is not really my kind of thing. Like, I am in no universe am I a fantastic woodworker, you know. And so I've had to do some of this stuff, and it takes it can take me hours to do these things, and then, you know, hire we could hire somebody to come in, and they would do it in 10 minutes, just because there's a natural flow for them to that kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that there can be a natural instinct towards one medium or another in the arts and for you it's painting then. yeah i think for me it's painting although i've been making some little clay sculpture guys which is also i like clay a lot too but it's it's painting is the most the most natural okay um before you said that you had an interest in film and literature mm -hmm. when you were younger um 
What do you think the relationship is, or do you think that there's a validity in the relationships between visual arts and other arts? I think, what do I think the validity is? I think it's totally valid. I mean, um, are you asking me how I think it's valid, or what? Yeah, yeah so... Do you ever find yourself bridging the divide between those genres, and do you think it's important to? Oh, okay. Um, I think maybe there is some script running in the back of my mind about that kind of thing. Um, for instance, you know, my work right now has to do with my dad, who's this kind of an old crotchety bachelor, and. Uh, a lot of what I've a lot of my favorite books in the past have been like Ernest Hemingway and um, there is a like a correlation there I think in the way that maybe Hemingway lived his life or at least what I think my vision of him and um, the vision that I have of my father as well I think there's a relationship there I think about like the old man in the sea and I think about the way that my dad lives his life and I see relationships there but I don't very often have, read something and then have it very directly correlate into my paintings or my drawings like it doesn't it's it's maybe I feel like it's more in the background Okay. So it's the same with, with other artists, other visual artists as well. Like I, I look at their work and I don't ever, not, not anymore do I, I used to steal a lot more than I do now, I think. You know, I think now it's just, it's like it's built up in the back of my head and then it just kind of subconsciously flows through. So do you think when you were younger you were looking for your artistic voice or motif maybe in other people's artwork and then now that you've yeah. found it, you know, there's no need? Well, when you're younger, I feel like you're really absorbing a lot, you know? At least that's the way I felt. Like there was just so much, like it was totally overwhelming. And I wanted to like paint everything that I saw, you know, I wanted to do a painting about a book that I read. I wanted to do a painting about a song that I heard. I wanted to do a painting about that green traffic light, like everything, you know? And like, I still see things that like I get visually excited about, but I, I feel, I feel like it's like a, maybe I was creating like a warehouse in, in the back of my mind of things that, that really inspired me because I'm not terribly good about reading anymore. <laughs> it's like, God, what was the last thing I read? I made a real stab at trying to read again, like make it a habit this summer because it just gets like tossed away now. Like it just doesn't happen because it's like I paint all day in the studio this summer and then I'd come home and like watch like eat dinner at nine o'clock and then watch like Game of Thrones or something stupid like useless you know mm -hmm. but um I made a real concentrated effort to try and read make it a thing that I did this summer and I think I just went back to like Stephen King I used to love Stephen King books too so you know maybe a lot thinking back on it now like maybe a lot of like the stuff that I was attracted to, like literature wise, was a very nostalgic feeling for me. Like there's something nostalgic about Hemingway and then there's something nostalgic about the way that Stephen King writes, even though it's like a nostalgia for a life that I never had. Like a lot of his stories take place in like Maine, you know, but that, like I can imagine a nostalgia for that kind of place and um, I was really into like beat writers as well like Jack Kerouac and Allen Ginsberg and 
that's like a nostalgia again for a time that I didn't live in, but my dad would have lived through it, you know. So they all they all kind of have that in common, and then I think that there's always been a strong amount of nostalgia that runs through my paintings. Wow, man, good question. Okay, I just had epiphanies. <laughs> Thanks, Dirk. No problem. <laughs> Um, so you cited your most recent series about your father, um, in regards to the series of paintings depicting your father, um, you cite the relationship between person and environment, mm -hmm. and how the two influence each other. Um, what environment do you think is most relevant to you specifically? Hmm. Um... I don't know if it's like a real, an environment that actually exists, but it's like the idea of home. Um, because that's something that's been very confusing for me my whole life because it's changed so much and never felt really very stable. So that, as far as personally and in my work, that's probably the environment is what, or the question of like, what is home? How do we decide what that is? Where it is? What makes it up? You know, are there people there? Is there an apple tree? I don't know. I think that's probably what it is though. And I can see, yeah, okay. I can see uh, similarities between that and your description of maybe nostalgia. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I think in my work, when I was in undergrad or just after it, my work all of a sudden took on this. You know, when I was in school, there was a lot of, you know, what I had to paint, what was recommended. And I did, I still did a lot of portraits though, like of people and family members around me. And then when I got right the year after, right after I graduated, I did a little body of work and it was all from these photographs of old, from my old family album. And they were like, I just was struck by how nostalgic they looked and felt because they were kind of faded. And so I did paintings from them. And I think that's really the first time that I can point to that theme being like, just kind of naturally coming up, you know? And I, I really do feel like in, no matter how my work looks, I feel like that theme is, you can find it somewhere. And, and you know, it's easier in the more representational stuff, I think. Or like in the current body of work, where I'm like directly saying, hey, this is about your home environment mm -hmm. and people's relationship to it. Um, but even in more abstract stuff that I've done, I feel like that's, really what's driving a lot of the time. Okay. Um, I noticed a change in your body of works aesthetic and materials between your 2011-2012 Discovery and mm -hmm. Close to Me series. Yeah. Uh, why was this? Um, so the 2011, that little body of work I did in, that was the last body of work I did in Bloomington. Indiana when I lived there um, and so that there was tremendous upheaval and change between those two series of paintings um, because I moved from Bloomington to Minneapolis with my girlfriend and I mean I've never been to Minneapolis I didn't know anything about Minnesota or anything and then also, right after I got there, my mom died. She got sick. I'd only been there a month. And she got cancer, and then she, within, she passed away within a year, I think. So there was kind of like a, I think again it was kind of like well what is home you know for me like that 
that came back and the paintings that I've done in Bloomington Bloomington were like I called them discovery because I discovered a lot of thing about a lot of things about paint I think when I was working on them or formal issues that whole body of work was really about that I think and um, then then you know after my mom died I wanted that did not feel personal enough anymore to just be thinking about those things and so the subject matter I just tried to make it as simple as I could the most central point of like where things begin and it just started with like self portraits and um, and then it kind of grew out from there to where I am now but it was like I mean there was big change personally between those two bodies of work so that has to come out in in the work somehow you know so that's that's pretty much it um So, I guess I'll change gears a little bit um, and talk about the role of community in mm -hmm. making art, um, because I think that when people talk about artists conventionally, there's this myth of the like secluded master, you know, yeah, going away and being a hermit. Um, so, do you think that the secluded master artist is a myth? And, or do you think that community plays a larger role in, in art? Um, I don't think it's a myth. I think there's a lot of artists like that. I think that is my tendency sometimes, like just be tucked away in my studio. I would say not like a master, probably more like a mad scientist kind of hermit curmudgeon um but i don't think I, I think community is important i really do and i it um it's something that i think different artists are go about it in different ways some artists naturally are better at generating community or being part of one um I think medium sometimes dictates that as well. Like sculptors probably have a greater community because guess what? One person can carry a drawing, you know, mm -hmm. one person can't carry uh, a giant sculpture. So um, I think certain artists go about it better than others. Uh, I know for myself, it's something that I have to get myself to participate more just because my tendencies are to be more kind of a studio rat than anything else. Okay, so how would you say that you interact with your artistic community now, if at all? Oh, um, well, I think exhibiting is a really good thing. And then beyond that, I think that um, being present and supporting other artists is a really good idea so i always try and go to final fridays in town and if people have openings i always try and be there you know to support them um last i did a couple things last year i taught um a class at van gogh um which is you know about van gogh yeah yeah, yeah. have you ever volunteered down there no you should think about it would be good um the kids are awesome to work with so i taught a i taught a uh, class down there their fall jams program i think and um and then i also helped install that the mural the solo wit mural as well last fall and then you know with the my position right now at the ha at hashinger is like that's all about community it's which is why it's good for me because it draws me out of my turtle shell and has me out there drawing murals with the students and you know bringing artists in to talk or give presentations and then you know bring the residents down as well to just to bring people together with it so that
that's what I've been doing. Probably. Okay. Um, and so you, do you view um, teaching as a part of your community influence? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the biggest part. I didn't mention it just because I wasn't sure if it passed, <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't a cop out or not. But I think it's a huge part of the community. I mean, a lot of the times, the community is in the art department. It's not just the faculty and the faculty or the students and the students. Like I think it's everybody, you know, to some extent. And um, yeah. Those are the people that actually you, I have the biggest impact on as far as community goes, artistically, is the students in class. So I would think that um, people can view teaching either pragmatically or ideally, mm -hmm. and that they can view it as a job, as mm -hmm. pragmatic or ideal, and that they're influencing other people and mm -hmm. helping them along their creative journey. And I think that's also relevant to uh, the creation of art as a whole. Do we make it, you know, as a profession or do we use it to actualize ourselves? Mm -hmm. um, how do you reconcile or come to grips with that uh, dichotomy between pragmatism and idealism? It's different for everybody. That's it. It's different for each student. Some students, they're there for very practical reasons. And then others are there for very idealistic reasons. And I think it's actually good to have a little bit of both. So I feel like if I have a student that's super practical about things, then I'm going to try and inject a little bit more idealism into them and be like, you know, maybe, you know, maybe you take a shot at doing something different instead of just making the same illustration over. Um, but then, it, you know, sometimes you have a student that is so overly idealistic that um, they're not thinking at all about how this is going to play out in the future. And then I think that that's a good idea to talk to them about establishing some set of skills as well. So I feel like it's, you, you want to get a little bit of both. You know, when I teach, I don't know, I feel... Do. I feel like it's both. Some days it's about idealism, and then some days it's about more practical things. Which do you think that the role of the university, what do you think the role of the university is in that dichotomy? I can't say what the role of the university is, but I think... When people come to a university, I think that what they're getting is a extremely well-rounded life education. And it's more than the sum of its individual parts. So you have, there's a reason why you don't just take math classes when you come to a university, you know? Mm -hmm. um, because you're not here to just develop a skill set that's going to allow you to write computer software for the rest of your life or weld. You know, those are good things. But there's other things that are more important. You can get those at a trade school, you know. When you come to a university, you're educating that part of you, but you're also educating a, you're developing your sense of self, I think. And you're developing it because you're testing it against so many other people and ideas that you can't help but start to figure out what you think, you know, both practically and idealistically. So I think that that's the role of the university is to be a big damn mess where there's a lot of people who think different things. And, you know, as you kind of the waves of all that kind of crash up against you, you start to get chiseled away and find your own your own self. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Okay. So I did know what the role of the university <laughs> was. <laughs> um, yeah, because, I mean, I've noticed that a lot of 
for some reason in a lot of the art classes I've had, it's mostly nurturing yeah. the arts, and it's not it's not looking at the arts pragmatically a lot of the time. But it it depends on the the instructor mm -hmm. mostly. Um, but it seems that there's a real lack of criticism, maybe, mm. uh, in, in, cl in art classes, uh, and which is something I would expect maybe in the introduction, but when I get up to like painting three and four, sculpture three and four, I would expect more... Um, critical analysis. More critical analysis, less telling me what you like about my art and more telling me what I can improve, because obviously I like my art and I like my art for different reasons, but... Mm -hmm. Bring it. That was you let me know when you want to meet. <laughs> now that I know that, I will be happy to give you some criticism. Yeah, and I mean, I've kind of had to tell my instructors that most of the time, uh, and I'm not sure w why exactly it happens. Because in my, like the, uh, my preconceived notions about what a university would be when I when I came here as a, a very critical. Uh, like evolutionary place mm -hmm. um, because in high school it's like I was the I was the guy that was good at drawing you know? yeah so when I'm among all the people who are the best at drawing I would imagine that you would begin to refine yourself in a way that would you know lead to criticism if you're able to be critical yeah sometimes um it's hard to be critical, I think. Um, but you're right. You're right. It's just an observation. Yeah, um, it's a good one. Um, so, going back to, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dirk. <laughs> who's, who's being interviewed? <laughs> Well, I thought it was you, but I mean, well, I could be wrong. I could ask you some <laughs> questions if you want. Dirk, what's your favorite color? Why? <laughs> um, so, what do you think makes an artwork successful? Not monetarily, but otherwise. I have to be satisfied with it and I have to be sick of it and I have to be inspired by it I think so that's a really good question it's like hard um, when I, I think okay let's go with the inspired I think those other things too but then I also I was thinking about it in terms of also like what makes it finished I think um, but I think I being inspired by it is the better, is the most important thing. So, because you could be talking about what I, like what I think makes one of my paintings successful versus, or what do I, about just some other painting, you know? Yeah. I don't know which one you mean. So I'm going to go with the inspired and for me, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of little things that make painting successful, like, oh, that was a really good use of color there, or like, you know, I don't know, oh, that's a thing they did with the brush. But I think to, like, really for it to be super successful in, in my eyes is when I look at something and I want to go make more work. And that is 
that in my mind is the thing that makes something the most successful is when I can look at it and be like, oh shit, yeah. And then I want to go back to my studio or I go out to my car and get out my sketchbook and like draw something really quick. So you think it's an incredibly subjective thing? Because, I do. You know, different people will take away different things from artwork and yeah. might not be inspired, might, might be. Well, I mean, different things are going to inspire different people, you know. We might sit down and look at a Lucian Freud painting together and I will just be drooling and frantically drawing something and getting amazing ideas and be like gone already because I'm back in my studio trying to work on something and you might be like taking a nap because you're like, this is the most boring shit I've ever seen. So I do, I think it's, I think it's dependent on each person. Okay. Um, so we're drawing, drawing to the end of this list. Um, <laughs> good list of questions. So what advice would you give to yourself 10 years ago? Oh, man. <laughs> it, it, it I already not. did it. <laughs> I actually did. I painted a wormhole and I walked through it. I went back in time. Uh, 10 years, 10 years ago? Or however, Just however long ago you think that something was incredibly important to know. What advice would I give to myself? I wouldn't give myself any advice. I'd just let him go, I think. I I don't know. Uh, I don't think that I would do that. I don't think that I would give myself any advice. Because where I am now is so dependent on that. And I, li I mean, I like where I am now. And I can't think of anything that I could go back and say to myself or teach myself that I would have listened to that would have made enough sense. I wouldn't have been ready to receive, like, anything level um i'd probably just say just keep going you're gonna be okay it's gonna be all right i think that's it i don't know again that's like not really an answer but it's an answer because i i get what you're saying that um the things that you find relevant and important past you might not and so they might not take your advice in the same way that you would want them to or yeah it's just not I mean I, I think about that from time to time like <laughs> but I don't I also know myself from the past and I know that I probably would not have listened and even if I would have listened I wouldn't have taken it the right way or I wouldn't have done the right thing you know now, if I were to be able to go back in time and just hang out with myself for like a series of five years, then we could maybe get something done, you know, but I don't think I could just pop back in time and be like, hey, bud, listen up, you know, so-and-so is going to win the Super Bowl in 2006. We need to put some money on them. Like, I just don't, I can't think of any single thing that I would say to myself or any advice or anything like that other than to keep doing it you just keep doing it like it doesn't matter even even if sometimes you can it you don't stop it it gets sometimes the ideas and the scale on which you work gets large and then sometimes the ideas and the scale on which you work gets small but you don't stop you just always keep trying to do it i think to some extent sometimes it means a lot sometimes what you do you're doing is very important to yourself or if you're a famous person to the art world in general but sometimes and then sometimes it doesn't mean anything to anybody including yourself you know but you just keep doing it that's it that's the key to success i think in yes. the arts is that the same advice that you would give maybe to an aspiring artist? Just Absolutely. 
I'm giving it to you right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also giving it to myself. You know, mm -hmm. is the other thing. I don't. Maybe I'm channeling some like 60 year old version of myself right now. But I mean, I think that is the best advice. Okay. You don't. You don't stop. You just don't stop. Um. So I mean, I only have one left, but it's like from the middle. I skipped around a bunch, but that's cool. Um. How do you apply your creativity to other areas besides the arts? You know, that is, um, I didn't used to feel like the arts used to take up like all of my creative energy and now, and by the arts, I mean just painting and drawing, but probably, um, within the last like year and a half or so, it's maybe started to kind of spread out a little bit more. And um, I find myself enjoying other activities like cooking um, quite a little bit and uh, or, or f attempting to work creatively on uh, projects around the house. So, or just, I mean, I don't, um, I mean, those are two like really obvious kind of answers but like really those are the biggest things is like I try and f I try I'm trying to let my studio mind kind of seep into other areas of my life and it could also be not just um, not just like cooking or housework or things like that but like um, uh, interactions with people is another place where I notice that I've, I've tried to let that kind of creativity seep into it. So instead, you know, everybody has a way that they interact with other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, conversation as a performance almost. And I wouldn't, it's not that, um, like, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not static, but I don't, it's not that stiff. Like, it's just, I allow myself to be more creative in the uh, conversation, the conversations that I'm ha having with people, you know? And it might have something to do with, like, time, too. Like, I allow myself to have more time in these other activities, I think. And that's interesting, because I think maybe some of it has to do with the fact that I... I think because I've been here now for like a year and a half, almost two years, I, this is as, this is like as close as I felt to kind of settled somewhere in quite a while, and so and so I think that that's one of the reasons why I'm just more comfortable allowing some of that energy to like run out into things like other activities, cooking, yard work, gardening. Gardening is an enjoyable activity, if you didn't know. I have no idea. Yeah, well, <laughs> you will know one day. You will, you'll be like, you know what? I feel like planting something. And you're gonna do it and you'll be like, wow. That was great. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, that's all of it. Is that good? Yeah. Traveling, I don't know, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, maybe I should add something to the end of this. What's something that you would want to talk about? Like, what's something that uh, you think is relevant to the arts? We already went over, uh, what do you? Th what would you say to an aspiring artist? But yeah. what do you think, like, uh, I don't know, maybe what would you say to me personally? Because we've, I mean, I've had two classes with you. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, um, well, I already gave you the biggest advice. That's like the central advice for everything is to keep doing it. Um, I think the other big advice that I would give you is to, continue to foster that critical 
like attitude to keep seeking that out because people won't just give that to you. You know, I said, like I said earlier, like it's hard to be critical and it is like nobody wants to be an asshole, you know, and but a lot of the times like you have to be in order to to help people grow. And so, but it's so weird because you have to ask for it mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, even, even in a place like a university. I mean, even when I was in grad school, like it was easier there to get, um, to get that critical voice than it was in undergrad. But, um, I think that you need to just keep, you need to keep trying to get that. I think that that's probably a really good idea. Okay. Um, beyond that. The other advice I would give you is to make as much work as you can. Don't worry about it too much. And allow yourself to think about other things too. So, you know, be very receptive to as much information as you can. Don't think about why it's interesting to you. I mean, don't worry. I don't think you have to worry about that right now. You know, um, just let it all kind of come in and just collect, collect all that different stuff. And then, you know, as you go along, patterns will start to emerge, I think. But it's really, I think it's a lifetime. I think it takes a lifetime to be like a fully developed artist. I think it really does take that long. I don't know why. I think it just seems like it. So what would you say is the difference maybe between just a creative person and an artist? Uh, let's see. I think a creative person... I think an artist is crazy. <laughs> I would actually agree. <laughs> I think an artist is crazy. Because, like, I've met, like, a lot of cr just creative people. And they are, like, I don't think I'm a very creative person. I really don't think I'm very creative. Like, I, and I also, like, the definition of that word is, like, I'm not, like, really, I don't know. Like, it gets, it's one of those words that gets bantered about and associated with, being an artist that it's like, well, I don't really know. Is that really the most people think that's the most important thing about being an artist? And like, sometimes I just don't know, like, you know, with like any of these guys, were they like really creative? Yeah, because there seems to be like a, a divide or maybe, I don't know, in order to be, in my opinion, a successful artist, you need to, be creative and have the skill set for it. Yeah. I think that creative people often don't take the time to learn the skill set and so they're creative in other areas. But I mm. I'm not sure like um you know or they do or they do take the time and they do have the skill set but maybe they're you know they they're not willing to make a lifetime out of it at the level that is required in order for it to be, you know, more than just being a creative act. I think it, I think a creative person can kind of bounce around a lot between very different things. And then I think somebody, like maybe that, I'm not comfortable making a definition between these two words really, but like maybe an artist is somebody that just is crazy and just just keeps doing it, doing the same thing until they're dead. That doesn't sound right, but it's like, I, this is going to bug me now, now I'm going to have to think about this. Well, I was always told that like, in my opinion, design students are more creative people than they are artists, maybe, mm -hmm. because they have to solve problems as it relates to information and media mm -hmm. and so it's like they, they're creative people at their base and then they learn how to solve problems because solving problems is interesting and comes readily to them. Mm -hmm. And artists are the same way, except that 
the problems are within them instead of outside of them. That is a good, that's good. But then I also think that there's a lot of artists that work. Sometimes I feel like there's a division and it's like, it's hard to just make a division like, you know, all artists are either A or B. But sometimes I really do think this, like that all artists are either working from the inside or the outside. And I mean, that's basically, this, I mean, I guess it is kind of the same thing that you said, except I don't necessarily think that, you know, designers are only working from the outside. Like, I think there's artists that also work with outside, more outside information than in. You know, and then there's artists that work from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I know that in my mind, when I hear the word creative, and then I hear the word artist, artist, I give a green light to the word artist and a red light to the word creative. Even though I always wish I could be more creative. But, you know, I don't know. My girlfriend's really creative. And she's an artist, too, but it's like I'm not. Her th thinking is, like, very creative about problem solving. And mine, a lot of the times, isn't. I just kind of like, or I don't think about it really. Like if I solve a problem, I don't feel like I thought about it and then had a creative solution, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like I just did it. I just changed something, you know? And then it was like, oh, that's different. Or maybe it's a inherent. wandering myself down a conversational back alley now and just stay here for the rest of the afternoon oh maybe the artist is the the person that makes that life decision to solve their internal problems but do it in a way where everyone's involved in it they do it in a very public way yeah that's good Yeah, it's not practical ever. <laughs> it's never practical. That's the, well, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm glad you asked that question, though, because I think about that a lot of the times. Like, how creativity plays a role in being an artist. Yeah, because I always saw artists as creative people, because that's always how people described right. me, maybe, or artists in general. But I understand that people can be creative without being artists, and I'm starting to realize that people can be artists without being creative. Yeah, absolutely. And then, I mean, I think you, like, again, like, it always comes back to, like, a subjective point of view for me. Like, because creativity, being creative isn't like a world, it's not like, it doesn't mean the same thing, you know, everywhere mm -hmm. in the universe. Like it could, something that appears very creative to you could s just not be creative to somebody else, you know? Not, people don't all always agree on that. but it all gets lumped together and we get these generalized notions of things. Like I always think about Van Gogh whenever I think about the words artist and creative. And then I think about little like 82 year old women and sunflowers whenever I think about those two words. You know, they have such big meanings. I wonder what it means to be an artist in like, I wonder what that word means in different cultures, you know, like in a, I wonder what an artist looks like in South America or you know, Mongolia or something, or what a creative person looks like in those places. I would agree that it's 
very culturally subjective. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's due to the type of problems that are introduced to people. Yeah, because those are going to vary mm. personal and culturally, you know. But then again, I think no matter what culture you're in, if you're a creative person or an artist, you're still either trying to work on problems that are coming from the outside or ones that are coming from the inside. And the ones from the inside actually could be being caused by things from the outside. And that's it. I shouldn't be allowed to say any more things because <laughs> I'm just going to keep wrapping myself in knots. <laughs> in knots. I had a pretty strong cup of coffee before. Good. <laughs> we can both agree on that. That's good. Cool. Cool. Any more questions? Um, I don't think so. Any more answers? You tell me. <laughs>